Hey everybody, welcome into my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sherry. We're gonna be doing a little bit of gel plate printing today with some different patterns, some a little bit bigger, some a little bit smaller. We're gonna see what we can come up with and just play and have a little bit of fun. Now, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give me that thumbs up. Really helps the algorithm and it helps YouTube to know that people are interested and watching my content and ring the little bell too. That way you won't miss the next upload. So the stencils we're working with today are from PM Artist Studio. This one is Sea of Crescents. It's one of their designs. I use it a lot, as you can tell, it's one of my favorites. This one is from PM Artist Studio as well but the designer for this one is Rhonda Dona. So you can go to pmartiststudio.com and you will find a vast array of stencils, different artists that create stencils for them. They have foam stamps, merch, all kinds of stuff. They also have a YouTube channel called PM Artist Studio. Gotta check that out. They stream on Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays generally, but this week they're filming, streaming, I should say, every day because it's like a extravaganza, if you will. But they on Sundays, they stream at 10 a.m. Central, same with on Monday, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays is 3 p.m. Central. So my time zones are 8 and 1 because I'm on the Pacific Coast. And so anyway... This is Dancing Leaves by Rhonda Dona. And then this one just happens to be from the Stencil Girl. And I picked it because I just wanted another little different pattern. So we have some circular motion going on. We've got some leaves. And then we've got the more geometric pattern. So we'll sort of switch it up a little bit. I've already done a couple and I wanna show you. <clears throat> what I did playing around, just sort of getting an idea of what I wanted to do in the video. And so this is this is the intended print, which is the negative print. And this is the unintended print, which is the positive or the ghost print. And so the colors I used with these on both of them are, I used some deep cayenne blue as my base, which is opaque. Most of my paints are Deco Art Americana paints. And from what I can tell looking at their website, most, if not all of their pa paints are medium opacity. Now the other, and they're all liquid uh, fluid acrylic that I have today. And then my other ones are Cali Art, and they do tell me whether they're opaque, semi-opaque or transparent and I have very few fully opaque and none to maybe next to none of complete transparency so we just do the best we can around here in my studio but anyway I started with the deep cayenne blue then I added in cadmium yellow then we went into some desert turquoise lavender Carousel Pink, Metallic Gold, and Buttermilk. So I've left those sort of in the order here in front of me that I used them in. So this time we're gonna do a little bit different color scheme, but I'm not really sure exactly what we're gonna do. However, as a couple of cleanups, and out of these two, it's funny, I mean, they really look so different, yet they were done the same way. It just goes to show you what the ghost print versus the intended or the first print, how they can differ with the same, basically the same colors. And so I did a couple of cleanups that we may do something with also, one on one side of my plate and one on the other. This one was done with Cali Arts Veridan and it is an opaque color. And then this one was done with bright orange from 
Deco Art, which is medium opacity. So I thought for this one, I've got a little bit of an idea in mind of what I want to add color-wise over multiple layers. So I'm going to start with my fully opaque same color, the deep cayenne blue. Put that one out there first. Well, I hope you're all well today. I hope where you're living or where, where you're living, where you live is nice weather today. We uh, have, and this side of my plate, I should say, interrupt myself. I was working on the other side earlier. This is a nine by 12. And then I realized that I had a lot of grunge left on this side. So that's when I pulled that orange one. So we're still going to get something up that was on there, but that's okay because it just is going to add character to our print. Um, yeah, where we live is um, windy. It's, it's weird. It's sunny, cloudy, windy, not windy. I don't know. Snowing up in the mountains and kind of just windy here. So we're going to start with the sea, <clears throat> excuse me, the sea of crescents. And I should note too that we are using rice paper today because I can then go ahead and collage with these. This is what I use. Uh, get it off Amazon, rice paper, sumi painting, drawing, calligraphy, block printing and watercolor. It's got a smooth side and a toothy side. And you always wanna make sure with um, rice paper that you're using the smooth side down. And you can tell, you can feel. Like this is the smooth, this is the toothy. So you want the smooth side down because when you go to um, collage with it, it glues down very well on this toothy side. So that's what we're working with today. And just for this first, this is gonna be our intended print. Yeah, so I hope you're all well, sorry, it's a little hard for me not to shake my table when I'm doing gel printing because my, not a bad little print, my camera is right next to me. It's not on an arm or anything. And I'm just going to set that up here for lack of space. Again, shiny side down. Okay, so this is our ghost print, otherwise our positive print, otherwise a mop-up print also. And that is not a bad little start. See how much difference there is between the two? Pretty cool. And this is considered a stencil. All I'm working with today is stencils. I'm not working with masks. Stencils have a border and masks are more of just a shape without a border attached to them. Now, I wanna come in with a little bit lighter blue. What if I did, now this is purely experiment, guys, purely experiment true. So that blue is fully opaque, and we know that this blue is semi-transparent. So let's just for, you know what, shih tzus and giggles, right? Um, what going just a tad lighter and saving my grumbies, trying to save my grumbies if I can get them to send to P over at PM Artist Studio. So we're, I don't know, this may not make a difference. It's purely experimental, so I'm just gonna put that. I like to keep them off to the side so I know what I've been working with. And we're gonna do, and when you are brayering, friends, pick up your brayer. Don't just roll like you're rolling paint on a wall, because you're gonna take, unless you wanna take your paint off. 
basically you're just rolling. We're getting a pretty nice little brayer off sheet here as well. This time for my second stencil, I'm going to go with this pattern. Okay, and which one should we do? Let's come in again. We might end up flipping this at some point and doing the unintended first with the stencil, but for now, let's just stick with this. As I said, this is a nine by 12 plate. And even the stuff you get on the sides is usable and fun, so nothing has to go to waste. These make great collage papers. They make great papers to share with your friends. If you do trading, you can make them into artist trading cards. Just send the prints as they are. I mean, the possibilities are endless. I don't even mind coming in with my brayer, even though I did the brayer off, look how much color is still on there. And if you're using this for something, you've got a little bit of a background too. So nothing wrong with that, right? Okay, so yeah, there's a little difference in color. Look, you can see the opaque, the opaque blue versus the medium opacity. Very pretty together, very pretty. I'm not disappointed in that whatsoever. Throw that wet side down. Now we're gonna come in with, again, our unintended print. Our mop-up sheet, if you will, which it's funny, a lot of the times the ghost prints, such as this one, turn out the best. I don't know why. Weirdest thing, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to come in with a little bit of greenish next. I need to set this aside because I need to look at my paints. See what I have. I'm looking at my next depth. Okay, we're going to be coming in. I'm going to do phthalo green as semi- I think I'm going to come in with, yeah, I'm going to come in with the Veridan because it is closer to the color I want and it it is opaque, but I think it's going to be okay because then we'll start moving, we're going from darker to lighter. I think that's going to be okay. So this is our mop-up. Pretty, very pretty. I love the variation. It doesn't show up quite as much as it does on the intended print, but you can clearly see the difference in the blues. Actually, the more I look at it, the more I guess it does really show up. Okay, now let's come in with Trying to stay in frame here. I hope I'm in frame. Yeah. Am I crooked? I think I'm good. Okay. Now, let's do our... Oh, that guy lives in this basket. Sorry. I know my dogs always think I'm crazy. <laughs> I can see the reflection in the TV there on the couch, on post, watching the neighborhood. Okay, this again is the Cali Arts, or Cali Art, this is the Veridan. I usually just do three. It is a bigger plate, so you gotta take that into consideration. Oops. And as you can see, we're gonna pick up a little bit of that blue that's still under there but that's gonna be okay it'll be pretty so I just ate lunch I had we have a local little place called Rossi's place here 
that makes the best blue cheese dressing. And I actually, I know I've mentioned it in some of my other videos that, um, I'll get a different brighter off here in a minute. That's got an address, so I don't want to, this one's already skewed a little bit. Um, yeah, I actually have the recipe for that, blue cheese. But anyway, we went there last night with some friends and had dinner. So I'm coming in with the dancing leaves. This is from Rhonda Dona. And I'm going to do, let's do again. This is our first print, our intended print. So we're going right over the stencil. Yeah, and they have a blue cheese burger that's really good. It's called the Rossi's Burger. And that's the one I got. But I only ate half of it, and my husband only ate half of his. So he took his half for lunch, and I just finished. Oops, sorry, guys, shaking the table. Sorry. I just finished my half, and it was very good. You know, we can't eat like we used to. And we talk about that a lot. It's funny. As you get older, I guess. All right. Pretty. We're getting some little different dimension in there and some colors. Now we can come in with our mop-up sheet. See what we get here. These are going to be great. Every month, um, PM Artist Studio does different. Like they have one as a color challenge. And so they'll give you usually three colors to work with. And then you get a, a black, a white, and one like metallic. So yeah, they do lots of, they do lots of things over there. So I don't know what the color combo for next month is going to be, but maybe be some of these. Who knows? Ooh, that's coming along pretty. I like that one. Again... There's a lot more, the mop-up is more painterly, and the intended print is more, I'm just going to say vivid, versus more painterly, right? We're going to come in and do some burnt sienna, semi-opaque. Another grumpy for P. Yeah, um, so the Facebook group that Patricia and Mariah run is um, Mixed Media Art and Artists on Facebook. <clears throat> and you can find a lot of information there about the different swaps, the different color combo every month, swaps, um, collage prompts. It's all under the, I believe it's the featured section up at the top tab on the Facebook page. This time, let's come back in with whoops, the Sea of Crescents. This baby has a lot of grunge on it, doesn't it? And I set that one kind of off to the side a little, but that's okay. Coming in again with our intended, I don't know which way I had it oriented the first time, but it doesn't matter. With our intended print. And you can see we're just building layers with different shapes is all we're doing. And you could do this a hundred different ways and it would never turn out the same twice. <laughs> so that's kind of what makes gel printing so fun too. Yeah, I told myself I was going to mop today, but then it was like mop, gel print, mop, gel print. Well, guess what I'm doing? I'm not mopping. <laughs> do need to get a drink of my water though. Okay. There we add just a little bit of... Burnt Sienna is what we used. Yep, Burnt Sienna there. Now, come in with, pull off that. See what we pull up here. I, think I need to get a little bowl for those. Actually, I'll grab one of my little 
palette things and just stick those in there. Otherwise, they're going to fall and I'm never going to find them. Okay, there. That's better. Now I have a place to put them. Okay. So again, Burnt Sienna, this is the mop-up page. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm on my glass mat, so it tends to be a little slippery. Yeah. See it a little bit, right? Picked up a little, not as much, very little in fact, but it's there. Okay, see how they just come out so different? Making sure we have a clean brayer. Ooh, there's a bright one, huh? Sorry if you can hear my dogs. If they get too noisy, I will shut my door to the studio, but they've been pretty good lately. They haven't really been too bad about barking. All right, let's take, we're gonna come in with the dancing leaves. But this time, we're gonna go on to the mop-up sheet see what we get there. Paper's starting to curl. It's funny, as you go along, it starts to do that more. Isn't that interesting? Just pushing down into all the little grooves. I don't have a Baron. I do want to order one from Anthony Cody, and I'm sorry, I do not have his website in front of me. But I'll try to remember to get that written down. Okay, so here is our intended print. That's pretty. Now we're coming in with our, I mean, that was our intended. Yeah, this is our unintended this time because it is the ghost print. Or the positive, if you will. How Most people say Ghost Brit. Easier terminology, I suppose, to remember. So our first couple of layers we did with opaque. Remember, we did um, we did the deep cayenne blue and we did the veridan, and both of those were opaque. Now we've been heading toward medium opacity or semi-opaque. This one. May have to shut my door. Ooh, that added a nice bit of dimension to that one. These colors are really turning out fun together, aren't they? Mop-up sheet, unintended, intended. Okay. So now, I want, still want to stick in the greens, but let me look and see. Sour apple, so that's semi-opaque. We did the monostraw green. I'm just looking at my green options. My only other green option, just phthalo green. Maybe let's do phthalo. I'd rather do that one than the other one. We may do just a touch of the other one. So this again, this is phthalo green, semi-opaque. You over there in that pile. And let's come in again with this stencil. I don't know what it's called. I got it a long time ago. Now I exclusively use P3. 
PM Artist Studio stencil. I mean, I play around with my other stencils, but if I'm going to order stencils, it's going to be from PM Artist Studio. Faux show. Ooh, pretty. All right. Be interesting to see what we get with this. Kind of got it on there crooked, so we're going to have some weird stuff, but that's okay. So let's come in with our come back in with our intended print. See what we get here. And we'll probably do one or two more layers on this. And then we'll maybe we'll pick another set of colors, do something a little bit different, maybe a little bit more in the fall tones. And then we will call that good. Yeah, I might still get my floors mopped today, but at one o'clock my time today, which it's almost noon here, one o'clock PM Artist Studio streams, and they're doing a whole week of stuff this week, and today is more watercoloring. So by the time you see this, that'll be over. So sorry, but maybe check it out tomorrow. They're going all the way through Sunday, I believe. Kind of like a March Madness for the last week. And for P's birthday, which is on Saturday. Patricia is the mother. Mariah is the daughter. Ooh, pretty. I like it. Okay, now pull that off. See what we get on this one, which is our unintended sheet, our mop-up sheet. I like my 9 by 12. Oh, there I go again, shaking my table. I need to get a bear, and I really do. Um, I The reason I, what was I going to say? Oh, I like my 9 by 12 plate because I can use more. If I do my 8 by 10, then there's really more waste on my rice paper. And... I don't have wet strength tissue. I'm gonna have to try to find some. I do use tissue paper and I use regular copy paper, but I do really like the uh, rice paper. Okay, they're beginning to look a little bit more alike. I really do like them. Do dancing leaves again in the yellow ochre. I don't think it'll knock it back too much because it's a small print. Come on. There we go. I've got all my paints out. Make sure we have all of that off of there. So this is opaque, so that's okay. I just really wanted the color and that was the only close as I could get to the color that I had in my mind for this particular pull. See some of that green coming through. Let's come in. Ooh, it's really getting windy out there. If you can hear the wind through my through my window. NEM, NEM. Oh my little doggies don't blow away. My husband works up in Mammoth and um it's snowing up there today. Yeah, we're just really having a typical spring. Hot one day, cold and windy the next. We're supposed to get some rain over the weekend. So we shall see. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Okay, I like that. And let's pull off our stencil. See what we get on our ghost print get those edges real good oh yeah Ooh, I like that. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay, now we're going to go into the yellow. So I'm going to go with the 
cadmium yellow first. Oops, I already had that one open. And I want, whoops, I want this to be as big a surface as I can get it. So I'm going to do the sea of crescents on this one. Again, you can tell on your plate, I mean, you can tell that this looks semi-transparent or semi-opaque, whereas when you put an opaque color on, you, you can't really even see, hardly see through the uh, paint onto your, onto your plate. And we're gonna go see of crescents and let's come in this time we're gonna go on the mop-up sheet and we're gonna go this way. So this is our unintended ghost print sheet for the most part, we've done it that way. I'm just changing it around to see what we get. So we've got that stencil on there. So we're just trying to get again with the camera, sorry. With the shaking of the camera, okay. See, ooh, hoo, 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 yeah, pretty. I like that. Okay, and let's come in with our. This one was our intended sheet. Let's see what we get, and then we'll probably do. We might do another little bit of yellow. I never did really do any orange, but on this, it's not going to be exactly like my inspiration thing, but it's similar enough, I think. Got a little bit up that time, didn't we? Got a little bit. Now let's go in with... This lighter yellow, this is more semi-transparent as well, but I feel as though, because it's a lighter color, we should see a little difference there. to the intended sheet first. Good thing I wasn't planning on barbecuing for dinner. I was gonna make homemade pizza last night with some a sourdough pizza with my sourdough. And since we went out, I'm doing the pizza tonight. So get this, see what we get. And I have idea for probably our last layer on these. So we've used primarily blue, green, yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, some cadmium yellow, medium yellow and a lemon yellow so far kind of been our palette here oh, yeah that's pretty i like it you can still see the difference between the two i think we're going to put one more layer on and we're going to call that probably good on these and then maybe let's just instead of starting over with a whole new selection of stuff we'll work on just add a couple more layers of something 
onto these and we will call it good for today. Maybe I'll get a little cleaning done before PM starts. I would like to use my favorite color of all. Well, not my favorite color, but one of my favorite colors is Light Buttermilk by Deco Art. Great color. Great, great, great color. This time I'm gonna do the intended print first and the mop up, no, other way. I'm gonna do the mop up first and the intended print second. Okay, back to Dancing Leaves. And we're gonna do it on this one first. So this is our mop up sheet. We're finishing off with buttermilk just for the sake of going basically darker to lighter. And I just love it as a pole color. Whoops, again, with the, with the, uh, with the shaking. Really push in there with your fingers. Oh yeah. Oh, that turned out pretty. Okay. I really like that, guys. I really do. Really, really do. So let's see what we can get on here real quick. And none of my paints are open. They're all the fluid acrylic that we're using today. So they dry very, very quickly. And it's a dry environment that we live in and it's probably drier even today because of the wind. I know when I make my candles, I always write down basically the temperature in my studio, the temperature outside, the humidity, and then I know different times of year when I'm making them, of course they're gonna uh, cool and harden at different rates, but your humidity, Temperature does make a difference. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. All right, I think those are two pretty cool prints we got today. Just experimenting around with a few of those colors. And now I thought it might be kind of fun. We'll go over what we did, what I did off camera and on camera. So let's take this orange. What do we want to put with this? Crimson by Cali Art. Do I have a thing I can pop off there? I think I do. Yeah, I do. Perfect. And we're going to be picking up some of this buttermilk on there as well. So that ought to be pretty. See, if this was a fully opaque color, you would not see those leaves under there. Gonna have some fun new stencils pretty soon to play with as well. I'm pretty excited. So we're coming in with the orange one that was just a background and really a pole sheet was more than what I mean. I was cleaning off the plate, but I thought it would make a good background as well. think what we'll do, I'll grab another piece real quick of rice paper for our mop up on this one. Because, well we might need two, so let's set two aside. 
because the ghost print I don't want to put onto the green or the vermilion. Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. Okay, take this, put it here. I've only got so much room, guys. So. Shiny side down, toothy side up, don't forget. Very important on your rice paper. Very, very important. So now we'll have two, we'll have an intended print in our orange background, and we'll have an un unattended, which is a ghost print. I keep repeating myself, sorry about that. Oh yeah. Well, there's a big tree, my big tree, by my studio window. Hopefully something doesn't come crashing down. If we suddenly go black, <laughs> you'll know why. Call for help, will you? As my phone is filming, <laughs> it won't be of much help to me. Ooh, pretty. Okay. I like that. Let's do a different shape with this one because I want to get, I don't want to put the green over this. Just for the heck of it, because we haven't used it yet, let's go with this sour apple. See what we get. And we're staying, for the most part, on the warm side of the color wheel right now. We'll venture into the cool side next, but for right now, we're in the warmer side of the color wheel. Do this one. Okay. Again, we'll start with the first print, the intended print. Getting a different pattern. So see, even if you only own one or two, well, you need more than one, duh. Uh, you know, two or three stencils while you're building your collection, you can make a lot of different prints. You can flop them, and if they're sort of more of an organic shape, you can flop them, you know, put it... These these don't really matter because they're going to kind of be the same either way, but, yeah, you've got a lot of options, a lot of color combinations. Just remember, if you work across from the color wheel, if you put, say, for instance, you put purple and yellow together, you'll get brown. Blue and orange, you'll get brown. So you will mud out your colors. So just be intentional about what opposites on the color wheel do to one another. They neutralize each other. That theory was used a lot in hair color when I worked in the salon, of course. You better know color theory if you're doing somebody's hair. Especially if you want to do color. We may not get much up off of this one, but we'll see. Yeah, I loved to do color. It was so much fun. So, so much fun. You'd be surprised how much chemistry goes into hair color color theory when it comes to hair color, lifting and replacing, lifting natural, replacing artificial pigment, just adding tint to color, just there's, it's just a lot, but it's fun. Oh, that's kind of a neat one. We've got a little bit. Okay. Coming along, very different, right? Very different because we don't have the orange on this one. Maybe we could do, <clears throat> well, no. Just thinking out loud here. Thinking to myself. 
what I might want to do. What I want to do. Oh, I think I want to go into a yellow range. I want to do the cadmium yellow. And I, this time I want to cadmium yellow. Just double checking myself there, guys. I want to go dancing leaves. I want to go on to this one. I'm going on to the intended one this time. Again, for the first pull. This one has a lot of small spaces, so. Pretty. And um, this guy. Let's see what we can get. Probably one more layer over this. We'll do the other one and we'll be done. That's pretty. That's really pretty. I like that. I think we're going to do on this one now is we are going to bring in our... Do I still have it out? Yep. Here comes our metallic. We're coming in with the big guns here. The big guns. I like metallics. <clears throat> oh, shoot, just ran right off the edge of my plate. Oops. Big old blob right over there. What do we want to do this time? Let's do, let's go back to our sea of crescents. Very well, well loved. This time I'm going to do the mop up page first. I love metallics. I like what they add to a print. They do dry quickly, so you have to be mindful of that. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Oops, except I got a blob there from the Blob, but we don't have time to mess around and clean it up, so we gotta pull this real quick and get this down on the plate, and then we'll clean that up. Got it, got it everywhere. Good thing I had a wipe handy, huh? Good thing, guys, good thing. it needs it needs something else still but it is pretty but it'd be the pretty base for um, for a project as will this I would be in inclined to 
I'm either going to ruin it or I'm not. Watch what we're going to do, friends. Watch what we're going to do. You might be cringing. If you are, that's quite all right. It is quite all right if you are. Because I might be cringing too. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. It's all going to be good. It's going to be all right. Don't you worry your little head about it. Not even for a minute. Because it's the smallest pattern. Whoa, 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 come back here. My stencils are sticking together. We're going to go like this. like this. This is our intended sheet. And we're just lightly, ever so lightly, as Carrie the crafter would say, kiss the page with it. Well, that wasn't strong enough. Okay. Let's get a little more aggressive, Sherry. We can actually get some color onto the paper. It's not going to be the worst thing in the world. A little bit more. A little bit more. I needed some black on there, was what I needed. Not a ton, but I just needed some black. Yep, that's what I needed. And then we come on to this one. And we see what we get. Does not have to be super duper a lot. And I don't even want it to be super duper a lot. That is nice. That's what it needed. Just a little bit of black. Okay, so our last, now we've got to do a little plate clean before we do start working on our, this one. We're gonna create a new background is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put buttermilk over this create a new sheet, but we're not going to work on that today. We're just merely going to try to get some of this up. But it should be pretty because it's got the gold in it. It's got the black again with the running off of the edge thing going on here. This is probably going to be a very pretty background. Start of a print. Shiny side down, toothy side up. We're going to let this one dry for just a minute, so I'll be right back. I think I'll put a few of my paints away, decide what we're going to use with the next one. All right, it's dried for a little bit, so let's just see what we've got here for our print, and we will be good to go. This is the start of a great background. I like that. That is very pretty, just like it is. You've got your black, some white, some gold. Great print, I like it. Okay, this is our last one. We'll just do a couple pulls and we will be done. So let's, what I've decided to do is, like I said, this one was, Pulled with the Veridan. So that's our base. It is a opaque color. This is a semi-opaque. We're going in with the Deco Art Desert Turquoise. With this one. And remember, there's probably still some black on there a little bit, maybe even some metallic. So we really don't know quite exactly what the plate's going to give us at this point, but it's bound to be gorgeous. See, I'm going over the warm with the cool, and it's going to start getting muddy. We're just doing the same ones today. We have not traded stencils at all. And apparently I can't get a stencil on straight either, so there's that. 
So this is our green Veridan that we pulled, just a, just a plate clean background. Clean in the plate background, all that one was. into the crevices of the croissants. <laughs> Crescents, not croissants. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Pretty, 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 pretty. This is just a mop-up sheet, shiny side down. We probably won't do everything on this one today, but this is just to clean up in between our layers of colors that we're going to go with on here. So we've got the Veridan, which is opaque, and we've got the turquoise, desert turquoise, which is semi-transparent or semi-opaque. Hopefully just cleaning up the... Uh, we didn't get much on that. It was too dry. So that's okay. That's all right. We'll just set that aside. Gonna get something pretty because it's coming up over this desert turquoise. So now we're working on the cool side of the color wheel. Last time we worked on the warm side. And I'm gonna do this shape on here. This stencil. It's a pretty versatile stencil really because it just a, like I said, just a geometric kind of a thing so pretty versatile. We'll put the mop up on this one that we just didn't get much off of and then we'll a couple more layers on this look at what we did and I will let you go. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful in any way, if you learned a little bit about gel printing with different shapes on a page, maybe a little bit of color theory along the way. That's really pretty. Like that one. And then hold this. Bring this guy in that I just dropped on the floor. He's not going to have much, but he'll have a little bit on there. We won't compare him to our, our primary print in this video because I don't want to take that much time to go over it that much. Now, see, it's drying. It dries so quick, but little by little, we'll get, we'll get some good stuff on there. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to come in with the magenta. What I might do, I'm going to have to get some new paints ordered, I think. Starting to run low. That's going to be pretty. I think on that one. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the dancing leaves. These guys are getting a workout today, but we're gonna do the mop-up page first, just so we can get a little bit more on there. And then we'll do the ghost print on our intended print. Just for you know what's. This one is lacking a bit. So we've got a little bit more on there, fun colors. Pull this off, knock this down. That's a pretty cool brayer off right there. The other one got a little muddy, see? I might mix the cool and the warm. Not bad, because I didn't go too long with it, but this is a cool, 
mop it, or spray her off. Okay, now let's see what we got on this layer with our magenta. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Very pretty. I think I'm gonna come in with one more layer. Now there was a little bit of gold on the plate when I pulled it with the Veridan. So there is a little bit of gold metallic in there, which is not of concern to me because now we're gonna come in with a silver metallic and that will be our final pull. Poke, <laughs> poke it in there because it wasn't coming out. Okay. Hi, Max. My puppy dog, Maxie's coming. What are you doing, bud? Some purple on there, some silver on there. And I think because I want it to be sort of bold, we're gonna just go for it with the Sea of Crescents. What's it gonna hurt? Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. Oh yeah, I like that. That is cool. Keeping in mind that this dries quickly because it is metallic. Let's get this down on here and see if we can get anything at all. And if that doesn't pull much, let's put a layer of buttermilk, pull with that, and we'll have another great start of just a background. And then we'll look at what we did today and we will be done and clean up. got a little bit. We got a little, not much, but don't fear. We're going to come in with buttermilk and we're going to pull this. And it's going to be party. Guys, I have so many projects in the works. I'm working on a couple of trades through PMR Studio that I'm just finishing up and I'll probably get in the mail tomorrow. I have a journal, junk journal I want to make for a friend of ours seventh, no, eighth birthday party next weekend. And another journal I've printed out and haven't started to make yet. There's just too many. Too many things I've got going. Not to mention, I haven't gotten back to my tome of trades. Let's hope this gives us just a pretty background pull. In fact, while we wait for that, let's just take a look at what we've got from today. These I did first off camera. That was the ghost print. This was the primary. And then we did... Then we did these two. This was the ghost print. This was the primary. Then we just did this one, which was just, this was our last pull, like that one. This just the beginning of a background cleanup. And then we did our orange primary and ghost print. Not too bad. I think we did pretty good today. We got some fun, good prints, played with some fun stencils. And now let's see what this one does. And we're just pulling it with buttermilk. Oh yeah, that's gonna make a nice background and the start of 
something fun. So, all right, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you had a good time. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And again, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't, and don't stick your hand in a pile of paint like I just did, um, so that you don't miss my next video. So, all right, this girl's got to get cleaned up and I got to get over to my uh, iPad and watch PM Artist Studio in 20 minutes. All right, guys, take good care, stay crafty, and just have fun. See y'all next time. Bye-bye.